season of the Wine O'Clock Show, proudly brought to you by Tom's Cap Vineyard Retreat. Escape to Tom's Cap. Carolyn's First National Real Estate, the number one choice for real estate on the Sunshine Coast. And the Olsen Hotel Art Series, right in the heart of Chapel Street. Yeah, I have become such a rose drinker. I drink nothing yeah. but. Yeah. Oh really? Wow. You know, if it's forced upon me, I drink others. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was at an event and I drink the other week, and after mm. literally one glass, I went back to the bar. And they said we've run out of rosa. That's like, oh, oh that was like, seriously, like, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Where is rosa? <laughs> Maybe you should bring some in your handbag just in yes. case people run out. A little traveler, a little traveler. But uh, yes, try that. It's beautiful. Oh, it's God. a real summer kind of. It's so you know? summery. Mm. It's beautiful. Oh, I love do you drink rosé with ice? I've seen people do that. Yeah, yeah. I do. Mm. I think that's a true mm. sign that I'm a middle-aged woman. Yeah, when you're doing ice and maybe a little bit of soda water. Yeah. <laughs> but I also think it's, it's, it's responsible too, right? Because yeah. I do, I live quite far away too. Mm. I don't go to many events, but yeah. I live quite far away, so I drive a lot. Yeah. So if you give yourself one glass of wine and yeah. then put soda water in your ice, mm. you can enjoy that for quite a while yes. and not feel like you're <laughs> so yes, I do do it. Whether that's something embarrassing to admit, yes, it's <laughs> so embarrassing. I am so water in my show. No, I'm officially not. That's a really good trick, actually, because I've yes. only started drinking this year. Yes. So I have two sips, and I'm just like wasted. Have you never drinking before? Um, I've I've had like six here and there, yeah. but nothing major. No. no this year I've been. Yeah, oh my God, that was so bad. That was strawberry Baileys. I was sick for three oh, no. days. I will never have well, a strawberry no, milkshake again. Oh, it was disgusting, yeah. Oh. So I think rosé is a better bet for me. But yeah, you've got to be careful because, oh, you know, yeah. we've got things to do. Yes. Yeah. So Kerry, Elsa, Joe, we welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us for our one clock show. Yeah. Love it. And I just wanted to say, wow, Channel 9 has exploded this year yeah. with are now an array of channels and the Nine Money yeah. channel is just going, I think it's a, a bit, you know, it's getting up there with actual the Channel 9, mm. uh, you know, normal channel because everyone is flocking to Nine Honey. So tell us a little bit about now because you've just launched a new ad. Yeah, we yeah. have. We are super proud of it. So um, mm. Honey is two years old now, which mm. is amazing. I, I came mm. on board after a couple of weeks when I uh, met Helen McCabe for the first time. Uh, <laughs> as soon as I, literally as soon as I met her and as soon as I heard the pitch for Honey, I kid you not, within about an hour, I emailed her going, please hire me. Yeah, yeah. oh my gosh. And then six months later, I actually emailed them both and went, can you hire me now? <laughs> so it, it was it was an idea that, that Helen came to Channel 9 to bring to life. Mm. Um, started off literally, I kid you not, with myself and two British backpackers. Mm. Um, yeah. And then the team has grown mm. and the audience has grown too, which is amazing. Yeah. And we've got... Columnist Stuart White like Joe Abbey on board, and we've got Beth Judd and Rosie Waterland, and mm. and Sylvia Jeffries, and some amazing mm. people in the right for us. And yeah. and and the success has followed, which has been awesome. We now have almost three million, you know, people who view our website every month, which yeah, is amazing. amazing. And we're also able to integrate not only online but on air. Yeah. We have daily TV segments on the 3 p.m. news that Joe is part of. Mm. We do our own TV shows. Mm. We have a Talking Married TV show, which is yes. a spin-off of yeah. the back <laughs> yes. Married Married Married. Married. Yeah. We love it. We're playing in the next season, um, which will be here before you know The it. countdown is on. No one's counting know? down to Christmas. We're counting no, down to Married at first sight. And then so good. podcasting and everything mm -hmm. else that that yeah. brings. So it's, yeah, Honey's been yeah. an amazing ride and it's, yeah. it's honestly one of the best jobs I've ever had. It's yeah. so fun. It doesn't feel like a real job. Everyone's always like, take a holiday. I'm like, but I don't have a real job. No, no what am I stressed about? I'm doing what I, I know, love. You I know. know, that's the solution to stress. When you can yeah. write about all your parenting fails and also things that you're passionate about mm. on a daily basis, like mm. in so many forms. I think that's why we're all there because we're so passionate about so many things. Yeah, do you know what I like the most? And it's become something that I've become really conscious of of late is the people that we work with. 
Yes. I don't know yeah, if Michael yeah. says that, but mm. the honey team yeah. is and to that to that end, you know, the nine digital team of which we're we're part of. Mm. It's just a great team. Mm. Yeah. Will yeah. you be doing video content on Nine Honey? I know yeah, you do we, a we, few shows, but we, we, are, we do a lot. Yeah. So Joe's been shooting a lot of videos today, which yeah. we've been talking about yeah. Elf, on <laughs> Elf on the shelf ideas. Yeah. Elf on the I shelf came ideas. up with twenty solid ideas, so head to Nine Honey if you need them. And there's so many cheeky ones now. I love how he's evolved into being yes. a toy to just like, you know, ruining your life and controlling your children. Yes. <laughs> Well, video is such a huge part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A website isn't just a website with a written mm. word anymore and yep. still photos. Mm. It is all about the videos that you put with yep. it. And we do our own unique videos, whether they're chat show videos, whether it's Joe down the barrel talking about something, mm. whether it's Elf and Shelf, we're doing some what we're calling honey hack videos, whether mm. they're kitchen, home, or wherever we're just yeah. doing the shit all yeah. over. And then mental health, autism, um, Absolutely. eating yeah. disorders. Yep. So really everything. Because our lives aren't black and white. We're, no. it's, our lives are so com mm. complex, mm. especially for modern women. So we reflect that in all the different formats yeah. that we have. And the way that you consume media, I mean, think about mm. yourself. Yep. You're at home in the lounge, you're watching television with your iPad or your iPhone. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's, it's two screens <laughs> generally a lot of the time, you know. Yeah. So you might be on the website having a look at a video while the TV's on in the background. So or true. You might be on your iPad reading an article while you're it's you're consuming it everywhere so you, yep. you need your and then you send that to your friends like, that. like yeah, yeah. something that you love we see you a video and you, you put yeah. it on your social and then you send it to a friend going watch this yes, because absolutely. you want to if you see something fabulous or something that teaches you something you want to share it yeah so that's why our honey team expands into like this whole team everywhere because yeah. we all just want to share everything like that arms. we love like yeah, yeah. Tree yeah. That is for sure yeah. it's a really exciting time for digital mm. yeah you know i think competition is a great thing i think mm. it keeps us all on our toes, it keeps us creative, and that's one of the things that I love about uh, about Honey and about working for Nine Digital, just how creative you yeah. can be. Mm -hmm. Because the good thing too is, is that with digital now, is that you can be anywhere in the world, yeah. and what, you don't have to be sitting at home no. at mm. six o'clock when it, or seven o'clock to watch something on television. Mm. You know, it's all as you said, iPad, iPhones. You can watch it anywhere around the Completely. world on demand. You know, it's yep. just you know. You can watch your you can watch Karen Affair while you're on the train. Yeah, no, I watch exactly. Today's on the train yeah. every morning. Yeah, you know, especially when I know Joe's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can like literally. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I just want to catch up on 60 Minutes, I'll, I'll watch yep. it there, you know, or you're yep. watching a, a TV series on Stan, and it's, mm -hmm. I love how connected it is. I mean, we'll, we'll be watching, a lot of the girls in the office are watching The Bold Type, which is uh, <laughs> the next kind of sex in the city. Ah, um, yes. And not only are we all watching it on Stan, but mm -hmm. then we're all starting chat groups. Yeah, all, <laughs> it's like he's got Twitter. It, it is, is. Yeah. 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 So it's really, yeah, it's interactive. a different way of it communicating. Is. Yeah. You know? But it's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. One of the things that I love that you've just brought out, Kerry, is the Windsor <gasps> podcast. Oh, oh, my gosh. It, the Windsor is the we best. Love the you love the Royals. <laughs> so we, we've wanted to do, we've talked about doing a Royals podcast for quite a while. Mm. And, and I actually sit right next to Helen McCabe and we're constantly, it's where we can do some of our best thinking. Just, yeah. And we uh, eventually just went, Let's do it mm. and turn it around oh, literally, I think, in a matter of mm. oh, two to three weeks. Wow. Um, so we've got an amazing but very small team who are working on it. Mm. Um, Julian Norton. Julian Norton is actually the team. Yeah. Writes it. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Dan McHugh who edits mm. it. But once you are in that space, my gosh, it's incredible mm. that the storytelling, mm. what, what you remember of them, when, when you hear, there's this wonderful upshot um, in our first episode, which is all about Prince Harry, Harry yep. um, where we're looking at Princess Diana and we're, we're talking about the death of Diana. Yes. And there is an upshot from, you know, the nine years bulletin 20 mm. odd years ago. It's Where chilling, Tracy yes. Grimshaw's reading it. And, it, <gasps> and, and you can hear the, the sad news. Yes, she, she can, can barely the, say yeah, it. From the voice, you are yeah. immediately transported Ooh, back yep. going, yep. Oh Can you gosh. remember where you were? Oh, I yep. was yep. driving my parents' orange Volvo um, <laughs> on the oh way gosh. past Cronulla Leagues Club. And I remember mm. being tuned to 2GB back in the day and mm. Ray Hadley coming and announcing it and just not, Con you just, didn't, just not yeah. even. And I think I probably at that stage pulled over and pulled out my gigantic mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> and With and the antenna and the, and yeah. My husband and saying, this, this, this isn't, isn't true. Yeah. This yeah. Can't, and can't so, be. No, I'm, I have actually heard it, but it's, yeah. it's just one of those yeah. moments, moments that you can't, you just can't forget. Do you know, and you were, such, well, yeah, I was at home with my mum. Mm. I had a day off from whatever I was doing, and we were both home just hovering around the TV. Mm. And then when the news came through, she actually collapsed onto the floor, and I just couldn't move. And uh, listening to the podcast, which Kerry voices, by the way, yes. um, and they said that she was 33 when she died, and I forgot, now I'm older mm. than her, and mm. I just can't believe how it's, young she was and how young funny. the boys were. Yeah. And well, when we look back, because we've been looking, in a lot of archival footage as we make this podcast, mm. which um, 
uh, to explain for those who haven't seen it. It's a 10 part series, mm. and we look at one member of the royal family each week. Mm. The first um, episode was uh, Prince Harry. Harry. <laughs> Meghan. When you're looking mm. at that archival footage, especially mm. when you look at like the funeral, the style, funeral, yeah. when you see how mm. young. Those Harry was, were, was yeah. and how um, devastated yeah, they were. It was, it was almost his birthday. He was about to start at Eton. Like yeah. it was a huge moment in his mm-hmm. life. And then he's walking in front of the world mm-hmm. behind his mum's coffin. Like it's oh, oh no, you couldn't imagine it. But it's the great thing about the episode is that you go through all of those hardships, but then you sort of get to sort of explore who Harry is now mm-hmm. and who he's yeah. become. Mm-hmm. It's so funny how you feel proud of someone that you don't even know because you followed his whole life and his journey and all the tragedy. Well, yeah. But you forget about those really, you know, those fun, fun Harry moments. moments. Yeah. Oh my god, the party where room. He's in yeah. Vegas. Yes. Yes. The nude yes. one where he's at the pool table oh, yeah. in the night. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's why everyone loved Harry. Yeah. yeah. And I think they've loved watching him grow up and then and look find at him his now. real life princess. Yeah. Now he's a father to be. Like I think people love that they've been on that Gosh. journey. I think they really feel like they have been on that journey. Well we have. I mean, and you can revisit all of that constantly. I mean, oh. their stories evolving and it's going to change really dramatically soon yeah. um, with the Queen and Prince Charles. Mm. I mean, there's so much to cover. Oh, mm. and then, truly, Goodbye, Republic. <laughs> oh, that was going to be one of my questions. You know, oh, yeah. Forget it. Honey, forget there's it. so much royal content and yeah. it's, it's it's not just a, oh, hey, we've just like, our, our readers want it, our yeah. audience consume it. It is regularly mm. our number one story. There, there would not be a day go by that we don't do royal content. Yeah. And I guess that's what led us to the podcast and mm. the audience just has a thirst for what it. What is it about the royals do you think that people uh, just I read love? a psychological study that claimed that the reason people love reading about the royals is because we love order and we love, you know, that whole, you know, sense and sensibility thing. Like we just love people. We love, we love order. We love rules. We love control. They, you know, sort of get out of control sometimes, but get back to that. That's one theory, but we also just love what they wear. <laughs> we love the, the genuineness of them, how they use, you know, their profiles for good, mm. for mental health. The yep. young royals are extraordinary people in their own right. And they're not all from royal blood, which is the mm. most, that's what I think is really, you know, in, reinvigorated yes, yeah. them for all of us because yep. we can relate to them. You know, anyone can be a prince or princess mm. these days mm. and do amazing work with their profile. Mm. And they've endured. You know, yeah. the royals have been around for a thousand years and mm-hmm. they, I, I know there was the rough period, you know, with, with the death of Diana mm-hmm. and the monarchy perhaps not responding the way they should have mm-hmm. and, and a lot of stuff said about the way they responded then. But yeah. look at them now yeah. and look at the, the public feels like they know Harry and Meghan. The mm-hmm. public feels yeah. like they know Prince George and Princess yeah. Charlotte and they swing over every photo because of Because they sort of softened, haven't they? They, they really, really have, have so many candid photos just yeah. taken by the parents in the backyard. Oh, yeah. yeah. the in-laws. And how much do you love those? Like, even the photos of Prince oh, Charles no. that came out recently. Yeah, yeah. Where, that was you know, like, Louis yeah, Louis yeah, yeah. And he's just and laughing. And he, you, yeah. We never used to see that from no, Charles. No. no. We just used to see him just being so stoic and yeah. whatever. Yeah, we used to stiff up a lip, whereas mm. now, as Bill was saying, it's talk about mental health, it's have a laugh, it's, you know, even those great pictures that were replaying just the other day of when Harry and Meghan were on Bondi Beach with the Fluoro Friday crew. Yeah. Just that seeing was them cool. there in the, yeah. the white ladies and T-shirts and everything. Just I think holding hands. They're the royals that people yeah. love Connect and with. know. And, and, yeah. and given that we've got a whole new generation mm-hmm. already mm-hmm. coming and Harry's going to contribute to that shortly and Meghan mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. I think we're going to be just as obsessed with them for yeah. decades. And Diana started it all, the People's Princess, yeah. and they've all taken a leaf out of her book, her boys have, and, you know, it's, it, it all goes back to her and how oh, she chose mm-hmm. to, you know, to be. So the question we'll go back to is when poor old Queen passes away, mm. or do you think um, that's the chance for Australia to pull away from mm-hmm. I don't think No, I think, think less than ever before. Yeah. Look at it, there was a, obviously a, the talk years back of changing mm. and you know, the, the millions and millions of dollars it was going to cost the Australians mm. to change currency. Oh, the but currency, then, yeah. You know, even like, so when the Queen does pass away, you've mm. got to have to spend that money changing the currency Do anyway. we want Charles do all we, over our money? Do we, <laughs> do we want that? Do we stick with Let's the Royals? Or do Megan we... and Kate. Yeah. I know. I, I think we will. I think yeah. we will. I think the moment for the Republican push has passed. Yeah. Yep. And I think Australia is so in love with the royals mm-hmm. and, and not just the idea of the royals but the work that they do the work the charitable work important. they do and what they stand for now that not I, I i don't see it happening because mm. if that charles will become king and camilla queen whatever um you know prince william will become the prince of wales you know he's yeah. going to take on all of these amazing responsibilities do you think and it's going to be wonderful no no, no you reckon he'll take no on i they, they won't will. and they shouldn't mm. and i think that um prince william will sort of really enjoy his role as the prince of wales it's a really huge thing for yeah. him and it's a huge responsibility and 
and mm. he needs that time. His family is young. Yeah. Um, so I think he'll be ready when his kids are growing. But well, right now, it's been too much. He's like the world's longest serving apprentice. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, yeah. I know, that's what I'm thinking. And I'm, thinking, he, I'm, like, I'm too old for this. I'll just give it to William. He married yeah. who he was instructed to marry. Yeah. He did all the right things. It's ended in you know a variety of ways. I mean, I think when you really look at his life and his choices, he just he tried to do the right thing. Mm. Times have changed. He's ended mm. up in a good place. Yep. It's time for him to be king. Yeah, very good. Yeah. One of the things that I loved uh, that came out a few weeks ago was um, how cheeky the royals are around Christmas. And, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, they've got obviously this, this tradition on Christmas Eve where they give out novelty gifts. Yes. Mm. And uh, Harry has given the Queen a, a gift, a shower cap that says, you know, life's a bitch across the front of it. And <laughs> you see wearing that cap. I want that on Instagram. I want it because they're, they're using their social media more. Share these moments, oh, yes, please. Really That's really oh, for Is sure. It, yeah, the prompt, have you ever had a bad gifting? And, you know, like, do you believe in the re gifting at Christmas? Oh, I'm new. You can most definitely re gift. <laughs> Um, I, I can tell you about a, an interesting gift, not so much a Christmas gift, but my husband many, many a year ago, um, before I stopped him buying me presents, I just said, I'll buy it and give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I will buy it, wrap it, put it on the tree, it's from you. <laughs> bought me a dress that was about eight sizes too large. Oh, what? And a jacket that was about eight sizes too small, so I was like a T-Rex. Wow. And I, had, I was like, thank God. He had tried so hard, but I was like, thank mm. you, thank you, but haven't I just buy them? Yeah. And now just, I'm yeah. just... So that's what we do. I just find out. Oh, you bought me this handbag. Yeah. Thank you so much. Or just really strong suggestions. Oh, yes. my goodness. Like circling things. Like, yeah. You should maybe get me this, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but no. That's a good but, idea. And, but re gifting, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can't say I've re gifted. I'd feel too guilty. Oh, no. Catholic guilt. Good no. Lord. Um, but we just do um, presents for the kids in our family. Yeah. Um, but we don't do, you know, like multiple gifts. So mm. I remember I used to get a few gifts for them, thinking if they didn't like one, they'd like the other. But now that the kids are all, there's nine grandchildren in my family and you can wow. pretty much go, go, what do you want? Give me a few options. And I know my kids well enough. Mm. Um, and this year, unfortunately, I've gone into debt to get them what they wanted. Oh, no. Oh. Well, one of them wanted a Nintendo Switch. And I was like, well, now I have to get, get it for all of them. So I've put it on after <laughs> Because <laughs> I cleared my clothing debt. So I was like, Aww. just in time for Christmas. Um, but I just wanted Christmas to be special with one great thing that they'll mm. love for a long time. And I figured that that was the best thing. And mm. yeah, grown ups don't need gifts. You don't no, need a gift. Come don't. on, Harry. But you, know what I, <laughs> but you know what I don't like now? And it's a standard response I get through. Like, my son's going to a party mm. this weekend. What do we get him? Just give him money. Yes. No. Yeah. No. I don't want to give. I mean, I know that no. it's only just one step above, you know, an iTunes voucher, but yeah. I don't want to give cash in an envelope. No, like, it's so I'm personal. The, the funny yep. thing is, my son, who's fourteen, Philip, he's 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 planned it all out. So he was going to get money from relatives to go shopping, but he was like, "No, I really want to open stuff on Christmas." Yeah. So what he's organised is to collect the money, go and buy the presents, wrap them, and then put them under the tree. Ah. So he's got. So he gets what he wants. They know that he's gotten something he likes, and he's got something to open for. Christmas. Christmas. So that is what it genius. is. Genius. It doesn't matter because he's just dying. He has to wait for Christmas to open them. But at least he's got things that he wants. So he knows he gets on Christmas that he gets to open because it's the Still opening. Gets the open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was really clever. That's pretty clever. Yeah. I'll tell you. Girls, are we going to um, close off the show with just mm. some quick questions? Sure. Okay. Okay. And, um, Ready. You can both answer at the same time. Or oh, yeah. Yeah. I my hand in a buzzer yes, or something. I know. Oh, yeah. I wish I had a buzzer. What if you said the same thing? I know. I know. It'd be hilarious. But it's. <laughs> Um, it's there. There is a mix, so you, okay. there might be a, a long-winded answer, but we'll put it all out. There. Sure. We can talk a little bit. We, yeah, 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 we yeah, can chat. go on. <laughs> um, okay. So, what TV character is your spirit animal? Oh gosh, Alex from Orange is the New Black. Oh, yeah, she's the girlfriend. Oh of, yes, the yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I love her. She's like she's my picture on my Netflix profile. <laughs> I love her because <laughs> she's like strong but vulnerable. You know, she's there for Piper, but she also tells Piper what she needs to hear. I sort of feel like I'm her. See, I think I'm Liz Lemon, Thirty Rock. <laughs> 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 no, pretty much. Well, I was a TV producer for twenty odd years. Yeah, that is, that is my favorite TV. You're like show. a smarter, and more I, competent. Liz I would Lemon. love to be Tina Fey. But yeah, oh, yeah, she's the one who just makes me laugh. <laughs> laugh. <laughs> what has been some of your biggest career challenges so far? Mm, gosh. Oh, gosh. Look, making the jump to digital. Yeah. Mm. You know, I, I'm a, I started in radio and then you have the challenge of moving to TV, uh, which has a whole different set of skills. And then going from 18 years in television to digital, mm. where everything's an acronym. 
Everyone is so much younger, quicker, faster, smarter. And Hashtagging everything. Well, well. And just... And so, you know what I do? This is a, a tip for young players. You take a lot of notes in meetings and then go Google. Yeah. Go Google it. Yeah. Or ask your kids. Go. Ask your kids what it means. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no idea. No yes. idea. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be my biggest sort of challenge. I think mine is every time I've changed jobs because I haven't had many jobs. So I had a big radio job and then I had a traffic reporting job. Then I started writing. And then when I changed jobs to Nine Honey, I was petrified oh, really? yeah so i've only had what four major four. jobs in my whole life and every time i've changed because i stayed in most jobs for like eight to ten years yeah. um yeah i find change so scary which is really weird for an aquarian <laughs> my rising sign must be really conservative but yeah change is scary but then you look back and go thank gosh i did that oh, so, so yeah i know yeah. me too i'm gonna stay until i retire good. i've decided good good yeah you've got that on video Kerry. yeah so you know, I probably, yeah, yeah. Probably. unless we start a site for like retirees yeah. and then i'll run that we can call it old we can run it together oh, yes. God, so funny. Old honey. done uh, <laughs> what the, what the, what's the um honey that they uh is it cream honey it's only cream honey oh my gosh oh, honeycomb, honeycomb. Okay. like it that's us <laughs> Oh, funny. So What's funny. the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on air? Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. I don't say I don't know if it's so much as funny, but as in a very big lesson for young players who yeah. want to be on television. Don't talk about your children on television and then have them see it. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, my very first TV appearance I am, I am a behind the camera kind of yes. person. I literally have spent my entire career avoiding this moment exactly. Yeah. But I'm you're a, so good at it. I'm a behind the scenes person and the first time I went on to we do a, a chat room segment on news mm -hmm. and you you need to chat and I was wanting to bring my own life into it and I spoke about my youngest child <laughs> in no other in no particular way mm. and they were that excited when I got home they wanted to watch mum's first TV oh. appearance oh no and then he's looked at me and I've looked at oh my god <laughs> and I swear oh. to goodness that was two years ago still brings it up oh, oh really you so, him yes fly. yes I won't talk about you on television again well then Sorry behave yourself that. otherwise yeah. I won't have to yeah, oh, oh, like, oh, that's oh, punishment <laughs> So yes, more mortifying than funny. But what That's so funny. Oh gosh, um, a lot of things I say accidentally get turned into sex jokes. And <laughs> <laughs> this year we were talking about Uber Eats and how some drivers like to take a couple of fries out of your order. Oh, so yeah. I've just innocently gone. I was just on with Sonia and David on day, today. X. It was my regular gig. I don't get nervous anymore. I was with Tim Blackwell from Nova, and I've just gone. They should just double bag it. Next thing I know, they're all laughing, and I'm like, What? what? Are they at? Yeah. Apparently that's something. Oh, is that a thing? Apparently it's a thing. I had to Google it later and oh, they no. were laughing so hard at me saying double bagging <laughs> that we couldn't continue and it was so rude. And Gary will be Googling TV. after this. And my <laughs> mum was watching. I will. My mum was watching <laughs> and mum was like, why were they laughing? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe they think it's ridiculous to expect your food to come in two bags. I couldn't possibly tell her yeah. and I cannot explain it now because I will go no, so no, red. No, 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 but no, what, yeah, yeah, but yeah. what I've learned is that when people are in a certain mood, and you say something that you think is completely innocent, they will just go off into the gutter. And yeah, I have to Google it later. That's yeah. embarrassing when I don't get it. <laughs> um, who was your first celebrity crush? Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, Do you know, it's probably Guy Pearce on Neighbours. Oh. oh. I had such a torch for him. <laughs> and I think when, when you're that young, you're convinced you're going to marry him. Yeah. yeah. I'm so going to be One day I'll meet him. It's just going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I loved him forever. I oh, just I still do. He's a, he's a he's, wonderful looking he's, man. Yeah, he's aged well. Yeah, he's, and yeah. so pensive and yeah. complicated. He's yeah. a talented man. I love him. Yeah. So, yeah, he'd be my first on-screen crush. Right, right. Mine was Daniel Day-Lewis from Last of the Mohicans. Oh. In Last of the Mohicans. Um, but also in, you know, In the Name of the Father. Um, when he plays that, you know, that complicated sort of dark yet amazing moral mm. man mm. oh god with the long hair oh i'm gonna watch masters when, <laughs> when i get home she's gonna netflix that <laughs> and when he's so in love stay alive i will find you no matter what occurs like i know that whole movie oh, off oh, <laughs> and i've never met him and i would never want to because if he was having like an off day i'd just be so devastated <laughs> I want you to tell leave him. him on the TV screen. Yeah, 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 for sure. Speaking of Google, what was the last thing you Googled? Probably some <laughs> Double bags. Yeah, no. I'll go to prison if the police ever see my Google search. <laughs> some of the 
topics I write about. Apparently, being a journalist is a defence when it comes to certain Google searches. Oh, if you get flagged, you can go, hey, I was writing an article and here's the article. But I think mine was Elf on the Shelf. Mm. I was I, I Googled Elf on the Shelf to come up with different ideas. Um, yeah, and it was great. There was so much to mine choose is, from. Mine is generally store opening hours. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, you know, you work for a job or because you're like, yeah. please turn that store swipe at 8 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sad but true. Yeah. yeah. Favourite movie of all time? Oh gosh. You know, it's got to be, and Joe and I had talked about this when mm. we messaged each other. Oh my like, gosh. Might have things like An Affair to Remember when Harry met Sally, but also Die Hard. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say Xanadu. Oh, Xanadu <laughs> also. But yeah, I'm just, oh, I'm such a sucker mm. for a. You know, give me yep. a mm. give me one of those high society, mm. a fair to remember type yarns. But then right. you can't go past you love actually. Yes. Oh yeah. But yeah. honestly, if I had to pick two, it would be Die Hard versus When Harry Met Sally. Wow. Ooh, love like those. Two love. different ends of it. It's kind of like my personality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. a little bit John McClane and a little bit Nick Wright. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my favorite all time movie is always Terminator Two, and it's so <gasps> random. Terminator Two. But I was a teenager, and I was forced to see it with some of my guy friends from um, school, and it just Terminator was everything. Uh, the, you know, the, Sarah Connor becomes like the strongest, most amazing. Mother, and I watched yeah. it before I became a mother. And now that I am a mum and I spend so much time fighting for my special needs children, I feel like I sort of channel her strength. Oh, yeah. Yes. And also my son and I watched it together and we are always doing this, which is the final scene. <laughs> but then we watched this really cool movie the other day. I can't remember what it was called, The Package. It was really funny actually on Netflix. Mm. And they did a reverse Terminator because oh, he was being <laughs> airlifted onto a helicopter because he'd accidentally cut off a part of his body that a knife should not have been near. It ended well wow. but it was like the first time I've seen a reverse Terminator it's I was bad that I've never seen Terminator it's really bad please what's go the one, home what's and the watch where it? they do the atomic thing and it wipes everybody out in... uh, the dream that's that... Terminator 2 oh, yeah, that, but that, the so whole that premise of all the of them of well I haven't seen any of the new ones I've yeah. only seen Terminators no, no, no. 1 and 2 and 2 was just it's like everyone says it's the only sequel that's better than the original yeah. by far mm -hmm. and it's incredible. There's a scene where she's like, she's got her son behind her, John, mm. and she's got this gun and she's going ch -ch, ch -ch, yeah. to protect him against this like With liquid metal. Yeah. Oh, that scene. And then it runs out. She's just holding her son. And it's just, it's everything that I want to be as a mum and everything I feel I am as a mum. And it's a futuristic movie about an apocalypse. Only you <laughs> yes. a beautiful, <laughs> no, beautiful mother <laughs> Out of Terminator. Oh, no, it's it. so random. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, please watch Terminator 2. Watch Die Hard. And Xanadu. Yeah, We've got yeah, a whole movie playlist yeah. for your weekend. <laughs> Do you have a hidden talent? Oh, gosh. I'm good at singing Xanadu. And suddenly, in the whole soundtrack to Xanadu, you are a singer. I found that you used to be Ooh. in a band. Ooh. Kerry used to be the lead singer of a band, and I said I wanted to do karaoke Did for my you? birthday in January. Long, we long could sing suddenly as a duet. We so could. No, I haven't. Um, it was a I, rock band. I, I did, yeah, I was in a rock band before I became a journal. It was that tipping point? Well, not that I was ever going to be. And our new boss, yeah. Shauna Anderson, told me. The she's young, known you for ages teacher. and she's just telling me all these random things about oh you. Gosh. And I'm like, what? She used to well, sing in a band? I literally would have this double life where I would be gigging in King's Cross. Gigging in King's Cross. Till, till, till midnight. <laughs> and then I'd be getting up at, you know, 2 a.m. to go work at the Alan Jones show. And it was wow. incredibly exhausting. And there was this point of, are we serious or are we just mucking around? Yeah. Mm. And look, uh, and half the band have gone on to be amazing musicians. Yep. Um, and you know, the rest of us have gone on to be journos and knee surgeons and builders and, <laughs> and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, in, in a former life, I was a, yeah. I was saying, I can also do a wolf whistle. Oh, I've got oh you are side. good at that. Kind of whistle. Mm. I don't know what, what I was that's the name of the band? Probably my, oh, can my, we Google it? No, yeah. you know what will make you laugh is what? that the name of the band was an old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie called Raw Deal. Oh, oh I don't think I've seen that one. No, it was a million wow. years ago. Yep. It'd be like twenty years ago now. I get dragged out of retirement yeah. every. I haven't yeah. sung publicly for like. Oh, they go to the Christmas party. For oh, oh my god! I'm dragged out. I'm of getting the karaoke time. machine. My goodness! No, I tend to avoid singing in public. Now I just sing in the car or to embarrass my children. That is your secret talent, <laughs> which is one of my other favourite things to do. Yeah. Embarrass yeah. my children. Mine would definitely be. Um, I love cooking, mm. and that's why uh, Jane DeGraff and I get along so well. Um, because she runs nine Jokes to the office. Yes. And we just yeah, so yeah, we just like text each other random things about cooking all the time and like we'll make I things and analyze yeah. things. Joel Dixon come in on public transport with like with like cakes 
tubs of, and she you know what the best thing is? Tubs of icing. I'm an yeah. icing addict. Jane and I always like, give her her own tub of icing. Cake, it's the icing. And the girls will come in with cakes they've baked from the start. Yeah. And I'll put a little container on. <laughs> Are and you the one that licks the icing off the She did that once. She came up to my carrot cake with yeah. a spoon and literally just took oh, another. What was it? My passion fruit cake. And took like icing with a spoon. Yes, yeah, so and now Jane and I literally just as soon as we put the cake on the table, we go to Carrie's desk, put the icing on there with a spoon. And I will sit there and Done. eat it. <laughs> Yes. Literally, I'll do that. I'll probably do that on my <laughs> What's the latest TV show you've binge watched? Oh. I'm re-watching Gilmore Girls from oh, season oh, one because I am Lorelai. Like I say I'm Alex, but I'm also Lorelai because I'm a single mum now for the first oh, time since February. Too. And, yes. um, yeah, I feel like I'm sort of part Alex and part Lorelai. And watching it from season one, it's crazy. Back to the very beginning. Oh. And I and my whole life revolves around watching it on, on the phone. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Well, I've just finished The Bodyguard, amazing BBC series. You've got to watch that. Yes. Oh. Just done the last season of House Cards. I have not even oh, started. Yeah, which, oh my goodness. Mm. And then I still will watch as much 30 Rock as I can. Right. Whenever it just pops up, it's just that great 20 minutes of just mm. watch it and just laugh. Sometimes you just want to laugh. What do most people don't know about you? Mm. We already know we, Kerry is, Kerry is well, a singer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What else don't people know about oh. me? Um, I did karate when I was younger. I'm a green belt. Really? I've been doing it for green a very shirt. long time. She probably needed to when she was in King's Cross, you know, <laughs> singing in a band. You have dog cam and you love your dogs a lot. Oh, my gosh. She's got two of the cutest dogs in the whole wide world. She's the best, like, fur mama ever. Oh, my goodness. My husband and I joke, not even joke, that we actually love our dogs more than our kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we all believe that. Learned, learned, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I love to confess to people that I'm incredibly insecure mm. um, because I think that when you've got a public perspective, and you just share everything and do all these things that look so cool, people sort of feel feel like you can only do that if you're confident. Mm. I actually feel like most of the people I come across in this industry were incredibly insecure and empathetic, which is what makes us good at our job. And I mm. think I'll be insecure for the rest of my life. I don't see it as a bad thing anymore. I see it as a starting point <laughs> and a conversation with myself to get to a point where I can do the work that I do. So don't worry about how insecure you are or how much you lack confidence. Yeah. Go for everything that you yeah. want to do. I'm a perfect it's hard example. Though, isn't it? It's a struggle when you have those. It's a like, massive yeah. struggle. I used to cry in the car before and after TV segments. I used to publish articles, start hyperventilating, go home, reread it, change some stuff. I mean, I still do that. I still opened an article going, huh, I'm going to reread that. I think I may have, you know, trodden on some toes. But I don't think it's a bad thing because I think it, it leads you to lead a really careful mm. and considered life mm. and to be really careful and considered with people's feelings. And I think when you do, what I do, which is meet strangers and share their stories about the worst day of their lives. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that vulnerability and insecurity and have a lot of empathy and yeah. cry when they talk to you. Yeah. So I've decided to embrace all of that now and to tell everyone that don't worry if you're insecure, you can still do everything that you yeah. want to do. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What's your guilty pleasures? Oh God. Icing, clearly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I was just going to say chocolate. <laughs> beautiful and thin and she eats buckets of icing. Yeah, but I think we have it for lunch. Like, I mean... <laughs> You know, yes. carrot, carrot, uh, was it carrot cake icing? Yeah. Doesn't could go as a, as a fruit it's or a vegetable. It's a dairy. It's got cream cheese. It is no word of a lie that for breakfast this morning I had fudge. Did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's a lot of food in the Nine Honey office. Oh, a lot of food. Is. Well, you know, when you've got a kitchen vertical and amazing <laughs> chefs like Jane DeGraff runs a kitchen vertical. Oh, my Joe. gosh. When she made the strawberry um, cocktails when, during the strawberry, the needles and the strawberry crisis, yes. Jane decides to let us know what to do with pureed oh, and yes. chopped strawberries. Next thing we know, there's like daiquiri. Yes, have a farm, have a day. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but we, when we were doing all the rural wedding coverage, which is yeah. massive for honey, it's like at mm. Christmas. Joe hated the thing. I like made the cake. Was the royal wedding. I made she the lemon and elderflower cake that was served at Harry and Meghan's oh goodness, wedding. And I've made it two more times because it's the most delicate, moist, beautiful cake recipe I've ever come across. I still have elderflower cordial and I was looking at it the other day. Is that up on the Honey website? Um, that recipe, it may not be. I think it's I sent it to Jane, but I'll put it on because I've got to bake something to um, this week because we've got a couple of fundraising things we're doing in the office. So I thought I might make them as cupcakes and do mm. carrot cake cupcakes. And yeah, it's, you can Google it. It's just, it's 
it's just I love um, a Joe cooking day. Yeah. When you when you when you see her Instagram feed and you see she's cooking up a storm, you're like, yes, I'm coming to work tomorrow. But yeah, I actually follow a lot of the recipes Jane puts up as well because um I'm not very good at different savory foods. I can mm. make cakes and desserts and Italian stuff, but I'm really bad at like the bakes and the chicken yeah. and the Chinese and yeah, and I whenever I Google the recipe, it's always simple, easy, quick. Yeah. <laughs> One pot. <laughs> yeah. One dish or less. Four ingredients, yeah. which is pretty much like the core of what Jane does, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, Guilty God. pleasure is probably eating. <laughs> <laughs> No. Last one, girls, red or white wine? Or What's rosé? Yeah, rosé. Oh, you guys, cheers I love you both so much. Thank, Thank you. When in Melbourne, the Wine O'Clock show stays and films at the Olsen Art Series Hotel, a perfect location right in the heart of Chapel Street, Melbourne. This season of the Wine O'Clock show proudly brought to you by Tom's Cap Vineyard Retreat. Escape to Tom's Cap. Carolyn's First National Real Estate, the number one choice for real estate on the Sunshine Coast. And the Olsen Hotel Art Series, right in the heart of Chapel Street.